laryngopharyngeal reflux, or LPR, is defined as a backflow of stomach fluid which contains acid and stomach enzymes such as pepsin to the larynx and pharynx or lower throat region. It is estimated that LPR is present in up to 50% of patients with hoarseness who are evaluated in otolaryngeal clinics. In my previous videos, I have discussed gastroesophageal reflux disease or GERD. LPR is similar to GERD in that both disorders occur due to the reflux of the stomach contents. However, there are differences between LPR and GERD. People with GERD have weakness in the lower esophageal sphincter, which is the ring of muscle between the lower esophagus and the stomach. In contrast, people with LPR have weakness in both the lower esophageal sphincter and the upper esophageal sphincter. The upper esophageal sphincter is located at the lower end of the pharynx. It prevents air from entering into the esophagus during breathing and the reflux of esophageal contents into the pharynx to fend off aspiration. When LPR occurs, the stomach fluid flows back into the esophagus all the way up to the level of the throat. Both the acid and the stomach enzyme, pepsin, which is the principal enzyme in protein digestion inside the stomach, play an important role in the damage of the lining of the throat area in people with LPR. In contrast, GERD is mostly caused by acid damage to the lining of the esophagus. Pepsin plays a minimum or unknown role in GERD. While most people with GERD have symptoms of heartburn, laryngopharyngeal reflux can cause little or no symptoms at early stage. Most people with LPR have hoarseness, throat irritation, but do not usually complain of heartburn. Pepsin is an enzyme inside the stomach that is most active at a pH of 1.5 to 2. It becomes inactive as the pH rises above 6. Pepsin remains structurally stable until a pH of 8. At pH above 8, pepsin is irreversibly inactivated. The pH at the voice box is neutral at around 7. In contrast, the pH inside the stomach ranges from 1 to 3 where the pepsin is active. During the occurrence of LPR, the pepsin and the acid in the stomach fluid are brought up to the throat area, causing damage to its lining. The pepsin becomes inactive eventually due to the high pH environment in the throat. However, the pepsin remains intact structurally and can be reactivated by the acidic fluid refluxed intermittently from the stomach or by the acids from acidic foods. People with LPR can have the following symptoms hoarseness or difficulty in talking, chronic throat irritation or throat pain, chronic throat clearing, sensation of a lump or mucus in the throat, throat tightness, chronic cough, cough that wakes you up at night, sick or too much mucus, trouble swallowing, pain with swallowing. The diagnosis of LPR is mostly drawn by clinical symptoms and the subsequent symptom relief after stomach acid suppression treatment. If the diagnosis is in doubt or if there are concerns of other serious medical conditions, the ringoscopy, which uses the scope to look inside the lower throat area, a barium swallowing study, and an esophageal pH test can help elucidate the diagnosis. LPR, if left untreated, can cause reflux laryngitis such as chronic cough and hoarseness, subglottic stenosis, which is a narrowing of the airway in a part of the voice box below the vocal cords, granulomas, vocal cord ulcers or nodules, worsening asthma, worsening emphysema, and possible laryngeal carcinoma. People with LPR should avoid caffeine, alcohol, chocolates, fatty foods, and peppermints, all of which can weaken the lower esophageal sphincter. Avoid acidic foods. 
citrus fruits such as oranges, lemons, limes, grapefruits, tangerines, etc. Kiwi, pineapples, tomatoes, and tomato-based foods can all irritate the throat lining and reactivate the pepsin in the throat area, causing further damage. Avoid spicy foods, which directly irritate the throat lining and aggravate the inflammation. Avoid carbonated beverages, which cause stomach distension and increase the pressure on the esophageal sphincter. The increase of pressure inside the stomach can trigger reflux and push the acidic fluid into the throat. Behavior changes are also important in LPR relief. Regular exercise to maintain a healthy weight. Quit smoking. Nicotine can relax the lower esophageal sphincter. Elevate the height of your bed by 4 to 6 inches with a lift or a wedge pillow. Sleep on the left side, which can greatly reduce reflux. In addition, avoid becoming overly stressed. Tight clothing around the waist should be avoided. Do not increase the pressure within the abdomen for at least two hours after eating. For example, avoid bending over, exercising, or singing, as these activities can force stomach fluid into the throat. Do not over distend the stomach by overeating. Eat smaller meals throughout the day instead. Do not lie down within three hours after eating a meal. The recommended initial medication treatment is a maximum dose of proton pump inhibitors such as omeprazole, pantoprazole, lansoprazole, etc. The medications should be taken half an hour before meals twice daily for a period of 8 to 12 weeks. Some people may need a longer period of treatment. If there is a symptom improvement, the twice daily dose can be decreased to once daily followed by dosage reduction as tolerated. Patients with uncontrolled symptoms of LPR may be candidates for laparoscopic anti-reflux surgery. Many people have to take proton pump inhibitors for many years to control the symptoms of LPR. Long-term use of proton pump inhibitors can cause many side effects. From my personal experience of acid reflux, I figured out that strict lifestyle change together with the use of antacids with a histamine 2 blocker such as Pepsid can keep the LPR symptoms under control without the need to take a proton pump inhibitor. I will discuss in detail what medications I used to control my LPR symptoms in my next video.